More Death Stranding coming your way today, folks. And I will keep them coming even faster if you hit them like and subscribe buttons. All right, let's go. Dead man, you there? Little help. Okay, Sam. Remove the pod and connect it to that incubator. It's in. Good. Uh, a temporary excess of stress. Easily addressed if we return it to its mother's womb. Mother? Located in the capital, not city, ICU. Brain dead, of course. Ah, you mean still mother. Correct. A still mother's womb facilitates a connection between the world of the dead and the BB. And you, in turn, connect yourself to a BB, granting you the ability to sense BTs. <sighs> These pods were designed to simulate the conditions inside a still mother's womb. BBs need to believe they're in one at all times to function properly. However, we can only maintain this deception for so long, which is why we must periodically update the environmental data by synchronizing it with a still mother via the chiral network. There. The update is in progress. Right now, the pod is synchronizing with the Steel Mother in Capital Knot City and reconfiguring its settings based on the latest data. Returning your BB to the womb in this manner will temporarily reduce its stress levels. That being where it technically belongs, of course. Kid looks happy. I'll try adjusting the oxytocin dosage. Autotoxemia should set in much slower from now on. <sighs> uh, you should remember that BBs are just equipment. Try not to get attached. Each one has been physically removed from its steel mother's womb. A process that renders them unpredictable and prone to failure. No BB on record has remained in service for over a year. Uh, it may need to be retired before this expedition is over. And then? You're saying there's no way to keep my BB alive? Uh, you must understand. There is still a great deal we don't know about BBs. As we expand the chiral network and recover more past data, perhaps we'll find our answers. Oh, right. You asked me to look into why the BTs might be reacting to your blood. I spoke with Hartman. We should have your results soon. Anyway, get some rest. You and your BB are both exhausted. Good night, Sam. Can you see me? How are things over there? Still not under guard. Still not chained up. Still can't leave. But if you can keep making connections, if you can get to me, we can go back east, back home. Thank you 
I mean that. It's bad. There are fewer and fewer people in the cities these days. No one's having children anymore. But humans aren't made for living alone. They're supposed to come together, to help one another. And if we as a people can't do that, if we can't reconnect, then, well, it's like Bridget said, extinction. Come on. Rebuilding America isn't gonna get rid of the BTs. As long as they're still around, there's no escaping it. But at least we'll have hope. I'll be waiting, Sam. Waiting for you. Come and find me. So, and also my research as it happens. Okay then. <laughs> I love how Sam points at things. <laughs> Let's go take a shower, Sam. Oh, actually, I think I just activated the toilet. <laughs> well, that's close enough, I guess. Nice. Water intake and beer intake. That was that was funny. Now let's go for an actual sh shower though. Because Hartman needs to explain something to us. Something important about our bodily fluids. Study other people with dooms? Everyone in Bridges, myself and Mama. Results thus far are inconclusive. But you possess other singular qualities, being a repatriate as well. I must confess to a measure of optimism. Processing fluids, waste products, dry relic, dispensing. There. Take the sample with you. Should the opportunity arise, try using it on a BT. I'm curious to see how they react. Who knows? It may even prove beneficial to you. There was an old research paper detailing the effects of bodily fluids from individuals like us on BTs. It is only by recovering these materials that we can unearth the knowledge of the past. Not just the death stranding but also the mystery of your body's unique properties and even our doom's affliction. There may well be hope for humanity. Sam, I have no interest in rebuilding America. I want to recover the past. Five, oh, four, it's almost three, time. Two, one. And he's gone. Connections and nothing happens, then what? I said, then what? He will not answer, and there's a good reason for that, that we, you will learn, not about the midpoint of this game. <laughs> Sam, sorry to bother you while you're taking a break, but I figured you'd want to hear this. Oh, maybe it'll help you rest easier. We received a number of messages addressed to you, and I've not taken a look myself, but I gather they're mostly from your clients. You should see if they contain any useful information. Mail can be accessed via your cufflinks, as well as the terminal in your private room. 
There's something else I'd like to share with you. With the Cairo Network, we now have the power to reclaim our past. Data once thought lost forever from every corner of America can be pieced back together from fragmented records. Our archives are still a work in progress, of course. But as we expand the network and integrate more way stations and cities, we'll be able to recover more and more information, such as the previous expeditions, logs, and reports. Everything they sent back was lost when Central Knot City was destroyed. Now, we've managed to restore some already, in fact. You can access them from a private room terminal or your cufflinks by selecting Archives. Might make for interesting reading. So I'm obviously not going to be reading all those emails. Uh, it, that would take too much time, but I can flash them for you so you can pause the screen and read them at your own leisure if you want to. Let's head in there and I'm just going to display each one of them for one or two seconds so you can read it if you want. Some of those emails actually contain very useful information for how to beat some missions. So if you're playing this game and you're playing this for the first time, you should read those at some point, at least the yellow ones, the important ones. All right then, so let's head out and take a new order. Everything in your power to save BB. This is a woman in a mask who's done nothing but lie to me. Well, there is some drama going on there, as you can uh, tell. The sad thing is that Kojima teases these things, and you only find out about them at the very end. Sam, there's something I forgot to tell you. It's about managing your BB stress levels and reducing the risk of autotoxemic attacks. There are a few things you can do if your BB starts showing signs of distress. Such as? Such as take a moment to look after it. Cradle the pot, gently rock it, that sort of thing. Out of curiosity, how's it doing at the moment? Uh, before I answer that... Something wrong? When I hook up my BB, I see things. What kind of things? Like a face, someone I don't know, calling to me. There's this room, too, with other people talking, but I can't make out the words. Hmm, lead-through effect. Didn't I warn you about this? You're mistaking the BB's memories for your own. They're false flashbacks, nothing more. Let me explain. A BB is harvested from its steel mother at around 28 weeks and placed in a pod. To be clear, this is before it's even born. The procedure halts its development. But even at 28 weeks, its sensory systems have matured enough to process external stimuli. It is more than capable of encoding this information into memories, which can bleed into yours via your connection. So who's the man I saw? Someone from the medical team, maybe? Or a BB technician? Does it matter? The BB has been in circulation for a while now. It's been handled by a lot of people. How should I know which one made an impression? Because you're the expert. No one's an expert, Sam. BBs were developed decades ago in secret. They're your quintessential black boxes. We may use them, but we don't truly understand them. Believe me, I've been trying to learn more, but almost all of the old records are gone. If I find anything out, I'll tell you, all right? Dead man's honor. Okay, so Sam seems to be mistaking the BB's memory for his own. Hmm. All right, let's go take the mission. While you're arresting, I read some network diagnostics. Aurelia monitoring and holographic systems are nominal. Unfortunately, our printer is offline. I know, I know. After all the trouble you went through to bring us those materials, this one's on us. We ordered a part a while back, but it never arrived. The printer needs it to communicate with the chiral network. 
mules must have snatched it, caught that porter en route or something. If I'm right, they'll have taken it to their drop site, which is smack dab in the middle of their territory. Don't suppose you'd be up for stealing us our property back? Can't think of anyone more qualified than you. And now this is one of those dreaded missions for me, because we have to go in the middle of a mule territory. <laughs> oh man. So, collection Carl crystals and recovery of a Carl printer interface. Both very tough. I could take both of them because one of them is just a collection mission. And, well, both of them are a collection mission, so I'm not actually gonna be carrying anything, I think. Mama's added a watchtower schematic to your PCC. If you don't have it on you, consider fabricating one. You never know when you'll need to recon an area. Which is interesting, but I do not really use those towers. Some people find them useful. I don't really like them. They just show you how things where they are. You can just find them naturally, I think. Unless you're looking for those uh, memory chips, you're going to learn about them later. But if you're looking for those kind of collectibles, then yeah, watchtowers are useful. That thing you're holding is a crystal collector. Now, as the name suggests, it provides secure storage for any crystals you gather. Uh, allow me to describe your quarry. Chiral crystals appear gold to the naked eye and have frequently found in formations resembling human handprints. The surrounding rocks and debris tend to float a few feet above the ground. And they are most commonly found in areas with high precipitation. Got all that? Mm -hmm. Rain, floating rocks, golden handprints. That's your trifecta. Look for these three things and you'll find the crystals. If you've been especially observant, then perhaps you already know where to look. Now, actually, you do not need to pay that much that much attention to find them. They're they're super easy to find. Whenever you come at any area that has a time fall, that's the rain once again. Uh, then you can find these crystals in huge quantities. So no need to uh, <laughs> try and look out for the signs that Hartman told us there. All right then. So first, we're gonna head there and collect some. Uh, Carol Crystals, I guess. The game wants you to go there specifically, so you gotta know that. Do not go anywhere else. By the way, let me show you. You see this, uh, this one right ahead of us? Sam, Cairo crystals are pretty small and can be difficult to spot with the naked eye. I'd advise you to use your ultra deck to point you in the right direction. If you want to survey a wider area, though, you might consider building a watchtower and relying on its sensors. All right, I'm gonna get the bike, go closer there. Uh, Sam? Seems like that bike's auto-charging unit is busted. If you want to take it for a spin, you'll need to use a generator to give it some juice. All right, and we can do that. So let me show you how we build the generator. You just equip one PCC unit. Level 1 will do, because there's various levels of PCCs, but a level 1 will do here. And, oh, okay, it allows me. So, and you go to the switch, which is essentially, oh no, actually. Oh, damn it. <laughs> that was a curveball. It told me I could build a uh, power generator, but I cannot, actually. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, we will build one later. Well, somebody was helpful enough and laid out not one, but two ladders across the river. <laughs> okay, let's see if that works. Ah, uh, I don't know, actually seems kind of dangerous. Uh, let's try it anyway. Oh man, we gotta climb this, come on. Okay, that's actually, well, not the best placement, but ah, close enough. <laughs> Alright, now 
You can see whenever there's rain, these crystals appear in bunches, so you do not have to worry about looking out for them. You are... Oh, my BB. Is he acting? No, he's not acting out. Okay. So I'm gonna keep collecting these crystals. See? You can find them in droves. There we go. Oh, we have connected... Oh, interesting. We have connected enough crystals, it says, to complete the order. Let's go back and check out if that's the case, because in my first playthrough, I think it didn't allow me to complete the order unless I go to the specific point it wanted on the map. Nice. You can see, by the way, how many there are. Let's go and collect some lost cargo as well, why not? It's very close. That is a good thing to do, by the way. Collecting lost cargo and delivering it to some um, nearby center, if it's not too much out of your way, mind you. If it weighs you down, don't do it. If, it, uh, if you have a huge distance to travel ahead of you, don't do it. But if it's right next to the thing, yeah, do that. You'll get some likes, and sometimes you will get upgrades, because the more deliveries you do to a certain uh, place, the better your rating with it. Right, so you can have from one to five stars. And uh, it's nothing to scoff at. You sometimes get uh, very nice upgrades to things like guns and stuff. Now right, let's go this time from here. That seems to be less steep. Remember to keep an eye on that uh, white line. Not the blue line, but the white line that's over it. That is going to matter. If it runs out, remember, the uh, current will sweep you away. And you will lose all cargo, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, we kind of have to do this now. Even though I don't like this part at all. Okay, Sam, come on. Climb up. Nice. And I'm going to let him recharge a bit. And be careful when traversing ladders. You'd think that you can just run across them easily, that the game would guide you through them, but it does not. Vertical ladders are easier because the game allows you to grab them and uh, you're sort of on rails from that point on. Beginning. Horizontal ladders, though. <laughs> no, you have to guide yourself, actually. Sam, when the title of this deliveries are a little different from the usual. The process is pretty simple, though. Access the delivery terminal and drop off the Cairo crystals you're carrying. All right, so let's de deliver the car crystals. You can do this by recycling. I think that's the thing. That's what the Die Hardman then means. Recycling things actually means storing them. It's I don't know why the game calls it recycling, but if you have metals and stuff like that, you can just recycle them, quote unquote and you will have them available uh, forever at that spot. Oh, we can only recycle up to 100, huh? Yeah, that's because uh, you have a certain capacity that you cannot exceed. That's the case with car crystals as well. I can only store up to 100 right now. See what I was talking about? As a reward for delivering missions, we get the container repair spray. Now, this one was a main mission, so everybody's gonna get that. But in some cases, there's gonna be secondary missions that give you stuff like that. So do not avoid secondary missions uh, like the plague, you know, do some of them. This container spray is critical for this very hard uh, playthrough because container spray repairs the uh, boxes I'm carrying, right? And uh, the rain destroys the uh, suitcases, the boxes, whatever you want to call them. So this is one critical piece of equipment for playing on very hard difficulty. Excess Cairo crystals can be deposited at any facility. 
they'll be added to the stores held on site. These local stores include materials that you can draw upon to fabricate equipment as needed. And he just told us what I was explaining you earlier, recycling quote-unquote things uh, lets you actually store them here and draw them uh, later, withdraw them later, to build things. Simple as that. Good work, Sam. It seems your connection level is increasing. As your connection level increases, larger quantities of resources will be made available to you at our facilities. Essentially, do more missions for us and we will allow you to store more stuff at our facilities. And we also increased our bridge link level, apparently. There's five stats that you can increase in this game. One of them, I'm not gonna get into all of them right now, uh, just to not bore you guys, but one of them is bridge link. This is the social stat in this game. The more missions you do, and the more you increase your bridge link, you can form the so-called strand contracts, which essentially is you pick some players that you think build the most useful stuff, and once you pick them, their stuff appears more frequently in your game. So they are kind of important. I'm not going to use them too much because I like to be surprised. <laughs> if you like to be surprised like me as well, you shouldn't pick them. But if you want to have an easy time, find the best players, form a strand contract with them and their stuff, the most useful stuff will appear in your game. Oh, and uh, we have upgraded another of those five stats. One of them, another one of them is the delivery volume. That is very simple. You upgrade that, you can deliver more cargo. <laughs> simple as that. You can carry more stuff. Oh, before I forget, this is for you. See, the more missions you do, you get stuff. Sometimes cosmetic, sometimes useful. That's container repair spray for patching up cargo containers. Good for dealing with timefall degradation and all that. Useful stuff if you and your cargo have been through the ringer. We've added it to your supplies list, so it's readily available if and when you need it. Now, one critical piece of information that the game doesn't tell you, and I do not know why they don't, because that's very important. Container sprays repair containers. They do not repair what's inside of them. So, if you let a container degrade, like to 100% damage, then what's inside it starts degrading as well. You cannot repair any degradation to the stuff that's inside. You can only repair the container. So be aware of that and use your container sprays uh, early on, right? Do not let things inside get damaged. There is a correlation between elevated corellian levels and increased crystal formation. This may well be the result of the network's expansion. You needn't worry though, local chiral density is still within an acceptable range. If you find any more, be sure to collect it. You'll be well rewarded. If you come into more chiral crystals, you can submit them at one of our facilities. And you can deposit other resources too, along with any items you don't need. Everything has its value. What we don't use as is, can be broken down into components for R&D and other applications. Everybody, I want to thank you for sharing this episode of Death Stranding with me. And remember, every like and subscription really means a lot to a small channel like mine. Okay then, catch you next time guys.